In this chapter, we're going to study trigonometry. This lesson is a quick review of the primary trig ratios. In this triangle says, classify triangle ABC according to its sides and angles. Okay, well, right now I know that this has got to be an obtuse triangle. Okay, and I know that because I can see that it's got one angle here that's greater than 90. Now, uh, as to its sides, I don't know. But I do know, I do know that if all of the angles are different, then all of the sides will be different because the, the, the sides opposite the angles are always sort of proportional to how big the angles are. So let's figure this out. Let's figure out what angle B is. I know that the sum of the angles in a triangle is going to be 180. So that's going to be angle B plus 120 plus 30. So now to get angle B, I'm just going to subtract the 120 and the 30. So, well, okay. That's going to be angle B plus, well, 120 and 30 is going to be 150. And then if I subtract 150 from both sides, 180 minus 150 will be 30 degrees. Okay. Oops, as you can't see the 30. I'm sorry. So 30 degrees. So this angle is here is 30 degrees. Now, because this angle and this angle are both 30 degrees, if you remember what I said before about the, like, a large angle opening up to a large side and a small angle opening up to a small side, if these two angles are the same, then they must be opening up to the same side. Okay, they have to be according to that, that rule there, which means, therefore, that this must be an isosceles triangle. So not only is it obtuse because of this angle right here, because these two angles are the same, these two sides are the same. Okay, well, they can't be as big as this one. This, that BC, that's going to be the largest side there. So this must be an isosceles triangle. Okay, everybody. In this lesson here, we're going to take a look at the primary trigonometric ratios. And the primary trig ratios, okay, are going to be our sine, our cosine, and our tangent. Now, the expectation at this point here is that you, you have seen these before. Uh, and we're just going to kind of review, review them a little bit here. Uh, where we're going to take the, the basic trig a little bit further will be in uh, kind of later lessons here where we do multiple triangle problems and, and take a look at, at what it would look like if you've got, let's say, three-dimensional problems here. But for right now, we just want to quickly review this. Now, when it comes to using trigonometry to solve, um, to solve for bits of information that you're missing in a triangle, first thing we need here Number one is we need to start off with here, at this point here, a right triangle. So in other words, everybody, what we need is we need to identify that 90 degrees, okay? That 90 degrees is going to help us identify the hypotenuse because it's going to be opposite the 90 degrees. Then what we need here, too, is we need two other pieces of information. Okay, now that might be an angle and a side, two sides. Well, you have to have at least one side, okay? So it has to be at least, at least one side. Okay, if all you're given is angles, well, then the triangle can be whatever, whatever size you want. It doesn't, that doesn't give you enough information here. Now, once you've got an angle, and trigonometry really, really does rest on identifying the angle. Whether the question is asking you for an angle or asking you to find a side, the angle is important, okay? Because it's the angle that helps us define the ideas of opposite and adjacent that are so key to trigonometry. So if this is the angle right now that's of, of interest to us, then this is the opposite side, and this one right here is the adjacent side. Okay, the opposite side is the one that isn't being used to make the angle. Okay, this angle right here is made from this hypotenuse and this side right here. It will always be made from the hypotenuse and the adjacent side. The right angle is its own thing. We're not going to worry about that. We're only going to worry about the other two angles here. So it's going to be made from the hypotenuse and the adjacent. So here, if this is the angle that we're interested in, that angle is made of the hypotenuse and the adjacent. The opposite side is on the other side. The opposite side is on the other side, or the opposite side of the triangle. Okay, so that's important. Being able to identify that angle helps us label the the triangle here. Then, you've got your primary trig ratios. 
And what these are, just to help re uh, remind you of what's going on here, is that if you've got a right angle triangle here, there is a very clear relationship between the size of this angle and the ratios of these side lengths to each other. They, they can be put together in a bunch of different ways here. So if we're talking about the sine of an angle, well then that's the length of this side divided by this side. And the nice thing is, is the calculator knows what that is. If, if I know the angle, it knows what the ratio is. Cosine is the length of the adjacent side compared to the hypotenuse. And again, the calculator knows what that ratio is supposed to be as long as you know what the angle is. And likewise with tangent, which is going to be the, the length of the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse, okay? Sorry, not the hypotenuse, the adjacent. Opposite divided by adjacent, my mistake. So if you know the angle, the calculator will give you what that ratio of the sides is supposed to be. Now, likewise, if you just happen to know what the ratio of the sides is supposed to be, well, the calculator can actually help you find that angle. And it's two different directions, okay? If you want to, if you're going to find a side, okay, it's just regular trig. It's the regular trig ratios. If you want to find an angle, uh, that's the inverse trig ratios. So the way we normally define the trig ratios is to go from the angle to a ratio of the sides, but we can go backwards from that side by use, uh, from the side ratios by using the inverse trig functions. And then we'll take a look at some examples of that right now. Okay, so for this question here it says determine the value of the indicated side in each of the following. Okay, so here we go. So here's my right angle triangle. Here's the angle that I'm given. So that identifies this is the adjacent. Okay, so this is my adjacent right here. This is my opposite. I have been given the length of the opposite side, and the question is asking me for the hypotenuse. So I got to think what trig function puts together the opposite, okay, the opposite and the, uh, uh, sorry, the opposite and the hypotenuse here. And the answer to that is that is the sine ratio. So I know that the sine of 35 degrees is going to be what the ratio of these two sides should be. Okay, the calculator will tell me what that is. Now, what I have is 5.8 divided by Z. Now, I'm going to go to my calculator. I'm going to figure out what that ratio is supposed to be. So the sine of 35 degrees, making sure that I'm in degree mode when I press enter, the calculator tells me that that ratio should be 0.57, uh, what do we got here? 0.5736. So that sine of 35 is 0 0.5736. Three, six. And this is 5.8 over Z. Now, this is basically that ratio over 1. Now what I want to do is I want to cross multiply and divide. So it's going to be Z is uh, multiplied by 0 0.5736 is going to equal 1 times 5.8. And so Z is going to equal 5.8 divided by 0 0.5736. Now on my calculator, I will just go here. I've got that ratio right there. If I just go 5.8 divided by uh, that answer, second, second answer right here. Now, a lot of your calculators will have that little, the ANS button there for the answer. It will take whatever this is and shove it in there. I'm going to get 10.1. So Z is equal to 10.1. Now, uh, uh, meters. Okay, because of the units here. And that actually makes a lot of sense here. I know that Z should be the largest side in that triangle. So perfect. Now let's take a look at this one. So again, uh, the hypotenuse is an issue here, but this time I've given you the hypotenuse. Here's the angle that's significant in this problem. And that defines this side right here that I'm looking for. This is the adjacent. And I've been given the hypotenuse. So now what trig function looks at an angle and relates it to the adjacent and the hypotenuse. Well, you've got to think about that for a second. Well, that's cosine. So the cosine of 40 degrees, calculator knows what that should be. It's going to be the ratio of the length of x, the adjacent side, over 19.2. Okay, well, the calculator knows what that's supposed to be. The cosine of 40 degrees, what that ratio should be for the length of the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse, when this is the angle, that should be 0.7660. So that should be 0 0.7660. That is what this ratio should be. Now, 
I'm going to cross multiply. But this, this is beautiful. When, when the unknown is in the, the numerator, the math is a fair bit easier because when I cross multiply, it'll be 1 times that. So x is going to equal 0 0.7660 times 19.2, okay? Or 19.2 multiplied by that answer, second answer that I just got here, and we get 14.7. Okay, so 14.7 meters. And that, that makes sense. That's in con, uh, conjunction with what I know should be true about the sides of the triangle. And I know the hypotenuse should be the longest side. So perfect. Now over here, this is the angle that's important to us. We've been uh, asked to look for the opposite side. And this time we've been given the adjacent. Okay, well, that's clearly going to be the tangent ratio. So the tangent of 70 degrees is going to be opposite y over the adjacent 7.2. Okay, well the calculator knows what that ratio should be. Tangent of 70 degrees, okay, I'm going to clear that, enter that in. Tangent of 70, okay, well the ratio is 2.7475, okay, 2.7475. Now, you're going to notice that when I, when I type in the ratios like the way I've been doing, I go to four decimal places, okay? That is that is just a, a kind of a standard that's been established from a long time back. A four decimal places for, for a trig ratio is about enough ac uh, precision um, for any application that you would have for that. And so now if you cross multiply, one times y is y. And then we're going to multiply 7.2. Okay, 7.2 multiplied by that answer that we just got. And when I round that to the nearest tenth, 19.8. Okay, 19.8. Now, that is quite a bit bigger than that 7.2 there. But actually, I'm okay with that because if this is 70 degrees and this is 90 degrees, well, it turns out that makes this angle up here 20 degrees. And because that angle is so much smaller than this angle, this side should be a whole lot smaller than that side. So yeah, that, that works. That is consistent. And I forgot, it's, it's meters. Okay, in this question here, we're going to look for the value of theta. So here, again, even though I don't know the angle, the angle that I'm looking for still dominates this problem. So if this is the angle, this is the opposite side. And then clearly because of the right angle over here, this is the hypotenuse. So what trig ratio relates the opposite side to the hypotenuse? Sine. So I know that the sine of theta, I don't know what the angle is, but I know that the ratio here is going to be 8.3 divided by 12.2. Okay. Now, in the previous questions, I knew what the angle theta was. Well, here I, I don't. Um, sine, the sine function, the cosine function, the tangent function, take angles and and convert them into ratios. But I don't know the angle, I know the ratio. But sine won't do it. Sine takes angles and makes ratios. I need the inverse sine, okay, to take a ratio and convert it back into an angle. So now this is easy enough to set up here. What we do now is we press second sine. And that takes me to the inverse sine function right there. And now I just enter in the ratio, 8.3 divided by 12.2. And we get, well, normally we round angles to the nearest hole, so that would be 43 degrees. Hmm. And there we go. It's, it's that. Here, this is the angle once again that's important. Okay, so that defines the sides. I've been given the opposite side. I've been given the adjacent side. So what trig function puts together the opposite and the adjacent sides? Well, that's, that's tangent. Now, that's going to require some memorization on your part, okay? So it's going to be the opposite divided by the adjacent. Uh, once again, because I'm looking for the angle, I need to use a different function. So this will be the inverse tangent of 6.3 over 5.2, okay? So second tangent to get the inverse tangent function, 6.3 divided by 5.2. And then to the nearest degree, that is 50 degrees. Okay? And that actually makes sense. Um, 
because the, the closer these two angles get to each other, uh, the closer the two sides are to each other, and these two sides are actually relatively close. And so I would expect these two angles here to be uh, sort of close to 45 degrees each. Okay? And that's, that's true. That kind of works out there. So that's, that is kind of within the realm that I would expect there. Good. Here, there's my angle right there. That defines this side as the adjacent, and then this side that I'm given here as the hypotenuse. So what trig function puts those together? Well, cosine. So cosine is going to be 6.0 over 7.9. Cosine knows what that ratio should go with though, so I'm going to, but I got to use the inverse cosine function of 6.0 over 7.9, but I will let the calculator handle that. Okay, so this will be the second cosine of 6.0 divided by, what was it, 7.9. And again, to the nearest hole, when we round that, we're going to get 41 degrees. Okay, good. And there you go. So that's how you use, you use the trig functions to, to go forward use, uh, to find an angle. Sorry, to go forward to find a side or to come backwards here to find a, an angle. So again, that should all just be review here, but hopefully that gives you kind of enough of a kind of a, a jog of your memory here that you can go through and answer some of the questions in the exercises.